Yay, chapter eight review, almost done. This uh, chapter is entitled Diversification Strategies or Corporate Strategies. Uh, one of the things I want to do is make sure that you understand what we're talking about in corporate strategies versus business level strategies. Chapter five is business level strategies. That's where are you doing uh, low cost provider, best cost differentiation or the like. So that's what, what's happening in a particular business. Corporate strategy usually uh, pertains to when you have a portfolio of companies and so it's how are you managing those individual companies? Are you shifting funds? Are you acquiring uh, businesses? Are you divesting businesses? Or, or how are you reaping synergy? Those are the elements of corporate strategy. So business strategy is how is that one company operating and what is its specific business strategy? Corporate strategies are about managing businesses, uh, not dictating the particulars of a business. Gave you some examples here. Diversification. This is when you have um, two or more lines of business that are in different industries. And, and typically, like I said, those within those lines of business, they may be running slightly different strategies, business strategies. Corporate strategy is what businesses should I be in? <clears throat> Excuse me. Talked about what makes uh, diversification strategies uh, tricky is because basically you've got multiples of businesses to manage. All the decisions you're making today in Globus, imagine if you were also operating in the MP3 player market. Uh, and even worse, if you're operating in the handset market. So you can see these are all things that you would have to work with. When to diversify? Uh, these are good points when a single business firm is doing extremely well and sees growth opportunities probably no reason to diversify it's when a single business firm sees less than perfect growth opportunities in its future uh, that it starts to look a field or as I illustrated with my example of the the guy cutting grass that put up Christmas lights when you have the key success factors or key resources they're gonna help you succeed in other business and lastly the idea of a brand name <clears throat> I cannot emphasize enough both in the real world and for the test this idea of the fundamental question is why are these two businesses worth more together than they would be independently uh, our textbook calls this the better off test and that's a great way to put it and I guarantee you're gonna get about three test questions right if you just remember a fundamental question is, are they worth more together or separately? Then we get into this idea of synergy. You remember from the previous slide, I said it's like pirate's treasure. It really does exist. A lot of people go looking for it. Not as many people find it. And then we have the proverbial one plus one equals three. And this is the epitome of the better off test. One firm plus one firm joined together gets great savings and for the test I want you to remember one plus one equals three in reality what you should be remembering is that one plus one is greater than two and that's that's the essence of synergy but remember one plus one plus equals three for the test um, and then the textbook I think does a great job of pointing out the the idea of the three tests a company should look into the industry attract uh, attractiveness test is it profitable the cost of entry test this gets into the the mergers and acquisitions and the penalty of paying it uh, too high of a premium. These two are important. This is absolute. In other words, you can't make a case that you should diversify into the business unless it passed the better off test. Uh, we're worth more together than we would be separately. Related businesses, these are things that share uh, commonalities in their value chain such that sharing is possible. In unrelated, you really don't have any interest or ability to share items across the various uh, business units to generate any sort of synergy. So this is built on synergy. This is not built on synergy. We're going to look at another slide that talks a lot about economies of scope as opposed to this is for related diversification. For unrelated diversification, you can see that it's really financial, 
each company stands on its own with also the proposition of uh, corporate parenting advantages. Economies of scope are different than scale. This is where economies of scope are where you can share things. And in some cases, it isn't just the sharing of actual activities. It's also the sharing of competencies and know-how. So what I know how to do uh, can help me in multiple places. And I use the idea of Procter & Gamble, where when they have a particular research discovery on something that works well in dishwasher soap, might that also not work uh, for general cleaning soap, laundry soap, and personal soap. So that, that knowledge can be shared across several um, entities. They talk about cost. It, it helps businesses with cost-related strategic fits. So the idea is you capture cost savings through this economies of scope. And this is how, because of those cost savings, is how you get the better off test where they're better together than they are separately or the one plus one equals three synergy. Uh, I think we've covered everything on that, on that. Unrelated diversification, this is about corporate parenting and the ability to know how to, how to uh, reap the gains off the individual businesses. In this case, we use the Danaher company uh, to illustrate this, where they have 44 different businesses spread across five product groups. They don't make any attempt to share anything across those. The only thing they do share is this corporate parenting advantage of we're going to teach you how to use the Danaher business system, which is really a, a source of lean manufacturing, and then they hire and fire managers. Simple as that. You're, uh, they, they hand off to each of these 44 uh, businesses and say, your job is to generate a lot of profit. Get after it. And if they do, they get rewarded handsomely, and if they don't, they get fired. And because of that, unrelated diversification companies often have fairly lean corporate headquarters much smaller than do uh, related businesses because there's no attempt to be sharing. All those businesses are independent, so all I have to do is to have a structure to hold them accountable for generating results. Um, this is a good slide, but no test questions on it, so I'll just click off of that. Talked about how unrelated, unrelated diversification is uh, not favored as much today, although like we showed with Danaher and private equity firms, some firms are doing this very profitably. We also talked about how um, firms are tending to really uh, be focused on their core competencies. In other words, people are being very aggressive about holding them to this better off test. And if the we aren't sure that they're better together, then let's split them off. And I'll show you talk more about that. We talked more about that in the end. We talked briefly about um, the idea of portfolio management and I told you that this chart gets the duh test but if you remember I drew on, my, on the board a chart in class about dogs, cash cows, cash hogs, and stars. That's something that you're going to want to uh, make sure you study your notes on that topic. And then to wrap it up, um, well, we talked about managers often cause these things to go badly because their ego gets involved uh, and they're trying to do good things for their job. This is a great slide to just keep your mind wrapped around uh, what we're talking about. They diversify into other business lines to improve performance. Related businesses, they share value chain activities, uh, or they have some sort of competencies that are similar to them. Unrelated, it's about parenting advantages, and then strictly financial, holding people accountable for hitting the number. And although we said that, on average, these aren't, uh, like so many topics in strategy, bell ringers for being the best, all, uh, best of everything. In other words, it's not a guaranteed winner if you diversify. What we do see is that when companies do it well, then it is profitable. And just to bring it home, if you remember, we, we talked at the end of class and showed uh, the article about how HP is splitting up its printer and computer businesses, which are the core HPs, um, and away from its more futuristic services, which is data management, servers, consulting, those sorts of things. And this was interesting because 
under the pressure of, of um, activist investors for the most part, they're taking companies and splitting them apart. And what's interesting is one side of that is fits as a cash cow business. And typically cash cows are used to subsidize young and growing businesses and now these activist investors are saying we don't want you to do that anymore make this one stand on its own make this one stand on its own we're going to get the benefits of the cash from the cash cow and let investors get that and a different set of investors perhaps are going to have to reap the benefits of the growing company so this is a very vibrant area of strategy okay done with chapter eight i can assure you because before i've made these videos I have reviewed the test questions for each chapter. So I have covered 100% of the test questions. I've also covered extra material too, but it's stuff I want you to remember. But if you feel comfortable and you with what I've told you and you pay attention to some of the slides where I've said I would really look at this slide, then I can assure you that you will be ready for the exam. Remember to bring Scantrons. Good luck. I hope I haven't ruined your weekend. God bless.